Chapter 2 Eric and the Enchantress of the Fjord The next day they set to work to repair Golden Dragon, but Eric took three of his best hunters and said, We shall kill some wild boar, and tonight we shall feast. Eric and Ragnar Folkbeard and Sven the Strong and Thorkild set off into the wild forest. They had gone no more than a mile before they came to a cave. At the entrance to the cave was a strange creature, half bird and half wolf. Eric, said the creature, and its voice sounded like a thousand voices speaking together. My mistress is waiting for you, and it pointed into the gloomy cave. Who is your mistress? asked Eric. She will tell you what you want to know, replied the creature. But Ragnar Folkbeard gripped Eric by the arm. Do not go into that dark cave, for I fear you will never come out again. I must, said Eric. But Sven the Strong gripped Eric by the other arm. If you are killed, we are all lost, he said. I must find out what I want to know, said Eric. And then Thorkild stood in front of him and said, Perhaps she is the Enchantress of the Fjord, who never lets any man return. If she can tell me what I want to know, replied Eric, I must meet her. And he strode into the cave, and the other three would have followed him, but the strange creature, half bird, half wolf, barred their way with its great talons and bared its wolf teeth. Whereupon Ragnar Folkbeard and Thorkild and Sven the Strong drew their swords and advanced towards it as one. Meanwhile, Eric walked boldly through the cave, and the light from the entrance got dimmer and dimmer until there was no light at all, and Eric was feeling his way along the rocky walls of the cave. Suddenly he stopped dead in his tracks. Above his head he could hear a sound like someone breathing. He looked up, but he could see nothing. Who's there? he cried. Go deeper into the cave, said a voice, and it sounded like his mother, although she was many, many miles away in another land. Eric put his hand on his sword and went deeper into the cave. Suddenly he stopped, for he could hear another sound above him. It sounded like a heart beating. Who's there? he cried. You must go deeper into the cave, said a voice, and it sounded like his father, although he had been dead for many years. But Eric pulled his helmet more firmly onto his head and went deeper into the cave. And as he got deeper, the cave grew warmer and he saw a red glow ahead of him. And as he got nearer and nearer, he let go of his sword and took off his helmet and found himself in a small room. It was warm and soft, and on the floor had been laid out food and drink in a straw bed. Eric was overcome by the desire to lie down and go to sleep, but something inside him told him to beware. Rest yourself, said his father's voice. I cannot, said Eric, for my men are waiting for me to return. Sleep, my child, said his mother's voice. I should like to, said Eric, and he lay down on the straw bed, but something still inside him told him to beware. I seek she who will tell me what I want to know, he said, and his eyes were half closing with sleep. This is all you need to know, said a soft voice at his ear, and he turned and saw a young girl beside him whose skin was green as jade. She held up a gold charm on a golden chain and said, Here, wear this around your neck, and you will know everything you need to know. And she lifted it up and Eric looked at her eyes, and still something inside him told him to beware. But he bent his head, and the beautiful green girl placed the chain over his head, and a voice inside him said, Stop! before it's too late, but the chain was already around his neck and resting on his shoulders. The girl gave a cruel laugh, and Eric's mind went suddenly clear like water in the stream, and he suddenly knew that this was the Enchantress of the Fjord, that no man ever returns from her embrace, and now he knew all he needed to know. But the chain was around his neck, and he realised that although his mind was clear, he could not move a single muscle.